Hey and welcome to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now if this is your first time watching any of these videos then I'd ask for a minute or so of your time just so I can explain how to use this guide and what it's about. Essentially this guide is entirely complete and it will help you get a full platinum for Sekiro. It covers all NPC quests that are relevant, all items, a best path through the game and also specifically strategies to get you through the game with the path of least resistance. Remember that this guide is supposed to be used as a full guide but you, could, you can use it for specific areas if you need to but if you're confused about how you know we are at a certain point or doing a certain thing, chances are the answer is in a previous episode. When it comes to boss battles, we really only show you the easiest method that we could find based on our perspective. If you want to fight the boss differently, it's up to you in this case to find a different and harder strategy. Now, if you have a good tip or have a question, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to a pinned post. That way this guide can constantly get better or more efficient. So if you have a question, check the pinned post first. If you do have a tip, please leave a timestamp so I can find the bit that you're talking about. Also, please bear in mind that this guide is taking me literally hundreds of hours to make, so if you enjoyed the video, the least you could do is give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a sub! And if you really, really enjoyed it, you can support the channel on our Patreon if you're feeling generous, or perhaps sub to us on our Twitch, that's another good option. Now on to the guide. Yo, and welcome back to Sekiro Ultimate Guide, and today it is Ashina Outskirts post raid yeah and this is the second last bit in the game before the final boss and there's a very very extremely hard boss in this part that we get to just completely skip but i'll explain that in a wee bit better detail once we get to it for now you just want to make your way through here and there's a whole bunch of like vaguely hard enemies in this area as hard as an enemy can get here so just don't fight them uh I think we, f we fight a couple in this area. I can just walk right past them all, what's the point? So I think there's... I'm... Yeah, all right, so there's actually a boss in this area just now, that, so we need to clear the enemies out before doing the boss. So that's a so something. Ah, oh, well then, there you go. Isn't this... Oh, I remember this one now, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's just another, like, drunkard, uh, yeah. like, shell. Yeah, because there's like a little guy nearby with like a big pot and pan who'll like yeah. sound the alarm if you don't kill him and he's like tucked away into a little corner hiding in grass. So we deal with him. So we're just using the axe to cut these guys down because, you know, obviously. And then we are gonna... There's like a guy that we need to like stealthily kill before doing the boss. So we need to like drag this guy up. So we will like walk up and we can like hide behind the wall and then like wall... Kill him, I guess. Man, I'm assuming you're gonna go through tall grass and get the little alarm dude before you backstab the boss. So there's another guy up at the corner in tall grass that we need to like bait out, kill him, get the alarm guy. And that's not a good day for him. He was just like, oh, I've just been set back here to patrol next it's to the It's probably big not game. a good day in general because I'm. I, I think he's just been told to like rebel against his own country. Just like, alright, government, take it by force, martial law, <laughs> on you go. Because this is meant to be like the special internal army of Ashina that's just turned against Ishin and stuff, is it not? Or something like that? I don't know. I'm, I'm implying that there's a story to this game. I know. So you can use the, the finger whistle to bait him forward and then go hide here and then bait him forward some more so you can like ledge kill him. I get you know, he's not like really that hard, but I don't, I'm not sure if you like use the normal axe method here, it will like alert the boss, so let's just forgo all of that. And somehow kill him silently by stabbing him in the, the stomach. I feel like maybe a yelp would come out. So, sure like a, ah! Yeah, cause- Like a Wilhelm scream. Yeah. Cause that's not an instant death by any means. That's <laughs> like a bleed out over like a few seconds sort of deal. There's, there's at least a, a final yelp in there. So you can use the shuriken to like one shot the pan man. But now there's something that we need to do while we're here, and there's one of the hard, hard enemies. Now, if you want to try it, you can fight this guy face first, but he's difficult, so you just want to jump as far as you can whilst, like, double jumping off the wall so you get behind him, and then you can backstab this guy. I swear to God, even with the axe going face to face with these dudes, they are fucking hard, so just do it that way and like, save yourself the effort, because honest to God, they're really difficult. <laughs> That was the guy that we blood smoked in the last part in order to backstab the other general guy that he goes to fight before the seven, uh, the seven spears guy. 
So now we can come along with the awning, and then we get the drop attack on this guy, and then there's just one... One health bar to go through. Yeah. Now, this is the other use for the spear, because he's got some armor, so you can use the spear to drag the armor off him. Oh, yeah. That's a thing that the spear does once yeah. in the entire game. Crazy, Thank eh? Thank God they put that in the tool tip for it. <laughs> no, otherwise you'd just never know. Because it's totally irrelevant. When else would you use it? So you don't even really need to drag the armor off him. It doesn't really make that big a difference. But ultimately, we then just go back to fighting him like he's just a normal drunkard enemy. Except instead of poison, he's got fire. He's also... Uh, so he also does a million damage. Yeah, don't just don't get greedy like, like every other Souls game. <laughs> but uh, we can just fight him like he's just a normal drunkard enemy. Bait out that one big attack, use Mortal Draw, and just repeat that until he's dead. Try oh, and hit so him. This is this is when he's going to start breathing fire, isn't it? When he has a drink from his gourd. Aye. Just, uh, just takes a big mouthful of fucking petrol. <laughs> That's what, literally what I'm thinking. He's just like, ah, I love gastro. <laughs> you know what? This, this whiskey isn't he fucking hitting the spot. Pure ethanol. I'm surprised there isn't a shell logo on his cape or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Somebody mod that in. <laughs> Sugar Kichu, the F1 driver. So this is like a particularly good spot to like get some hits in. But as you can see, he's it's, it's really quite easy. At this point, you could deflect him twice and probably kill him. But why bother when you can just put in no effort and run around and use the mortal draw? Exactly. And that does the same thing. There you go, and that's him just signed his own death warrant. Bish bash bosh. Easy peasy. Thank God you took his armor off. That was pivotal in that fight. <laughs> the spear really swung it in your favor. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'm glad you noticed as well. <laughs> So I switched to the um, Divine Abduction here, but actually, just use the axe. I tried to like bait this like one guy out at a time, but... Oh, these are like the little uh, rat versions of the Interior Ministry, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, oh god. It's so annoying because he's like one of those enemies where he's, he's like, can see you through the corner. And yeah. he's like, she's so annoying. And he can't just fight you. He has to, like, flip a million times and... And then, like, break your fucking spine and all this garbage. It's so irritating. Like, I got so, so annoyed because I was like, ah, divine abduction, just one shot them, fuck it. But just use the axe because trying to, like, line the divine abduction up is just so irritating. I was just like, you know what? Fuck this. <laughs> right out of the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, he nearly killed me. He's on fire. And he's still going... So yeah, that was the lesson there. Just use the axe. And then there's this guy that just allows you to backstab him, but... You didn't take it for some reason. I wanted to inflict as much pain as possible. Ah, uh, at this point it was personal. <laughs> yes, this is for the last one. <laughs> Why don't you divine abduction him? Just to prove that it worked. Don't give a fuck. <laughs> passed it. Aye. <laughs> I'm passed it, mate. I'm passed it. <laughs> So, we're just going to run straight to the bonfire. Now, this part here, um, I'll, ju I'll just mention it briefly, but the enemies in this sort of square area here, the three or four enemies here, and then all the enemies in the clearing, you can pretty much kill all of them and get about, I can't remember how much gold, but a good amount, especially if you pop one of the balloons to get extra gold. They so also do drop upgrade materials, don't they? Uh, they drop, I mean, they'll get... Rarer. So, Remember, they, like, you, you suck up the gold, so when they drop it, they'll, they'll suck up like an amount of stuff, they'll drop an amount of stuff. Um, this is the best farming area in the game, so you kill that guy like that, you kill that guy, you go up the path, you kill the other two guys, you go into the clearing, you kill the other guys that are about there, and then you just run back, suck up the gold and repeat. But I'll do a video on that, specifically. And um, But now we've got the items in that area, we're just moving on. So this is the peddler guy, and if you've done his quest, I guess, he'll give you this promissory note which reduces all the other merchants' stock by like a certain percentage. Was that big body there his like, the yeah. guy that you sent to him or is he just like... Nah, that's the guy I sent. Ah. So, this bit, this part is really annoying and eventually it got to the point where I was like, you know what, this is one of those parts where trying to fully stealth it 
is just not worth the time and effort invested. It's not an option. Well, you can stealth an amount of it to like get rid of some of them to make it a bit easier. But ultimately, uh, you want to try and stay on like this side so you don't alert the guys that are patrolling. But use the axe to kill more of these fucking dudes. You can just see how fucking irritating they are. They just jump about, they poison you. So annoying. Take dousing the dousing poison or whatever it's called before you fight them. Because the poison damage you take from that is like a third of the damage you take from normal poison and it makes you immune to normal poison while you're under the effects of it. Well, it doesn't really matter. But once you've killed those two guys, drop down and like... So even if this guy's patrolled away, wait for him to patrol back. Just as long as you kill that guy before moving on. And then back up to where you killed the two rice hats. Yep, and then you jump across and then there's like up on the apex of the hill. Once you get here, uh, there'll be one of the pointy hat guys will start like walking down. There you go, that's him there. Now you want to just wait for him to like pass before like jumping onto the top of that little uh, little structure. And then there's like another guy that we need to take care of, but I think this was the point where I was just like, yeah, being stealthy is just like, it's just fucking, it's like two guys, you can take care of two guys, it just doesn't matter. But, what we do is, normally, what I did is I went down and I killed that guy, and then tried and killed this guy within the right space of time, but now I actually just bait this guy out, wait for him to patrol, and then go and kill the guy at the structure, because then it's just that one guy you need to take care of. I know it seems like a little bit of a roundabout way, but you also just don't want to get, like, pure ganged up with by these dudes, so just doing it this way. If you just want, like, the path of least resistance, this is going to be the easiest way to go about it. blood smoke. Uh, well, I mean, it, it just doesn't matter now. No, it doesn't. I'm just saying, you can drop down onto this, uh, this structure, jump down and blood smoke as this, as that patrolling guy's going past them, and then... So you, so them. you can't really, because you can't reliably get the backstab on this guy is so irritating the way he's positioned trying to get the backstab like you can get the drop attack sometimes if the camera fucking lets you but most of the time it's not happening but i managed to get it there See, so that's sekiro suffers from that whole like you can't just walk off an edge a lot of the time in this game the game like locks you onto where you yeah. are so you couldn't just walk off the edge of that you'd have to actually jump and move the tiniest bit forward Instead of just stepping off. Did I pick up the, the item there? Yeah, I did. You know that, so maybe pick up the adamant yeah. scrap. So now there's two more of these rat guys when you like bait forward. And then like so you can kinda of bait one at a time. If both of them come, then you know again you've got the axe or whatever, but and firecrackers is a pretty good start. Yeah, I actually genuinely can't remember the last time we used a firecracker this game. <laughs> Yeah, firecracker and then axe one where the other one's still staggered, I guess. Yeah, no, I thought I thought you could like be cool and like use the this the big spinny attack with that. You, but you're not cool enough. Yeah, and then I just wasted a whole bunch of emblems. So at this point, I was raging. I was so angry. Fuck you and every one of your kind. Yeah, these guys are probably the worst enemies in the game. I hate them so much. All of these ones with the little, like, bowl hats. Yeah, no, they absolutely are. They absolutely oh, are. Oh, God. So that's them taken care of. Like, now, torch hollows all over again. Except worse somehow. So now you need to take care of this next part coming up. Now, kind of specific point, but it allows you to, like, stealth this, like, full area coming up. So, take a Gatchin Sugar just now. You should have an amount of them. And then... Or if you don't, you've got the infinite use one from the, uh... This headless. is true, yeah. You can just use the headless one. So then equip Mountain Echo and boy oi 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 up and then jump onto this bit here and once you get to round about this point these guys will start patrolling so you can like throw a ceramic shard at that guy what? <laughs> and, then and then the other one uh? and then he's like uh? and then the other one <laughs> oh, yeah. fuck the torch up as well because now you need to do that in one kind of fell swoop before they patrol too far but that's why you want to bait the um you want to bait those rat guys over that way you can just come straight to doing this part because if you move over to where the rat guys are and start fighting them it might attract those guys that are patrolling or you might start their patrol too early so you that's why you want to bait the rat guys over to where you are and then move forward so you can make sure you catch the patrol on time because otherwise you need to wait for the wall around again or indeed you can just quit out and reload 
So we're gonna come up to this like big square structure, kill this gun guy. That's quite important actually. You need you need to do that because he can he end up spotting you. And later he on. has a cannon. It's a pretty big gun. So then we go up and kill this guy, and then we can repel over and kill that guy over there. And then kill the chained ogre for a third time. Yeah, yeah. This time he's not just like a normal dude, but you can you can have a guy fight the chained ogre for you. Hey, third time in Ashna, third time for the chained ogre, right? Yeah. Thank God. Well, they just have them laying around. Yeah. So I'll just bring out another one. It's the war ogre. <laughs> <laughs> the ogre. So there's another one of those like difficult guys, like we uh, backstabbed earlier by jumping over the like, jumping like across the like the rock face. So this is this guy here, and again they're really really strong. But you can puppeteer him, and uh, have him kill the chained ogre, or indeed just like run up and backstab the chained ogre that way. And then puppeteer the chained ogre. <laughs> so yeah, if you want like to just straight up cause like some mayhem, you can just jump down, puppeteer the chained ogre, and like. Uh, just have him like take care of a bunch of guys, and that's kid pretty entertaining. You could leave all the gunmen alive, and then just have the ogre stand in the road screaming as they all fire at him. <laughs> Be like the last samurai. <laughs> <laughs> you could put some like slow like movie music over it, like the dramatic sadness of what's happening on screen. So the chain ogre's just like <laughs> drop kicking infantry. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love it. One chained ogre versus a hundred samurai. I'd I mean, the samurai see... win. No, they would, but the chained ogre would have a fucking laugh before he died. It's quite annoying. The chained ogre can't get any uh, grab grab attacks on those guys for some reason. Yeah. Uh, so now we're moving on to the next boss. Now I want to just preface this: is we are absolutely cheesing the utter fuck out of this boss because the boss that's coming up is ludicrously difficult. Cheesing doesn't even describe what's about to happen. It's essentially just skipping, honestly, and I, this is the method that I recommend. I've never fought this boss legitimately, and thank God this method exists, because if it didn't, I don't think I'd actually finish the guide, if I'm being totally honest. If you do want to fight him legitimately, I recommend the whistle for stage three, and the shield, the flaming shield prosthetic tools. Um, just to help make the fight a little easier. Essentially, there are other guides out there if you want to fight them head on. And by all means, like, rest here, give him your best go, um, see what he's like. But if you're anything like me and you're just like, this is, I have, this is going to take up too much of my life for zero effort when I can just kill him this way, you can make the choice. I am, I'm not going to cover a legitimate method in this guide because, again, this is the path of least resistance. We just want it done. It is what it is. Um, and if you're unsatisfied with it, so be it. But there's other guides for that. And I'm perfectly happy with, like, you know, you can go look at someone else's guide. That's totally fine. But what we want to do is we want to come to this corner and then bait him over here. And then once he's, like, roundabout in this area, we then want to go over here to this wall. And then, like, come around and, like, catch him behind that tree. And then his AI will just, like, bug out forever. And he'll just, like, follow you in a straight line. And this has worked every time for me so then we're going to jump up onto this platform here and try and jump across to here now when you're jumping up onto this platform you want to jump up and then immediately like hold square in like kind of one smooth motion and when you jump across to this platform you see that we jump like just slightly off the edge it takes a while to get it but it can be done and that's it that is literally it. Now you just wait. And that's it. There are other guides out there. If you there want. are three stages to that boss as well. Yeah. And you also get a Lazuli as well, so that's, that's pretty good. Now, there are other guides that will show you how to do this in even more detail. I don't think it's particularly necessary. You can go and look at them if you want. There isn't a guide for it. You either have to learn how to do the boss or you just skip it. Yeah. I get there's a little bit of a technique getting up onto that platform, oddly enough. Uh, but ultimately, like, because when you're trying to jump off the edge, you have to, like, run and jump, and you have to, like, just clip the edge of, like, the tower in order to make the jump over to the wall. But that's, like, the hardest part about doing this. It really, you should not be able to make that jump at all. The game shouldn't allow you yeah, to I grab know. onto it that Yeah, It doesn't ledge. look like you should be able to do it, but you can't. Yeah. 
Like, I can understand the game letting you do that if you're, like, in the Gyobu part of the game where you're trying to explore the castle, but at this point, man, they should have destroyed that tower. So, use your memory to power up your attack. But yeah, I also agree, you'd think. Now, here's the thing, like, this would be super easy for them to patch out if they wanted to, just move the tower just slightly. Um, it's a destructible object, just have it destroyed. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's true. But luckily, they haven't patched it out, so I'm, I'm pretty glad about that. It's unlikely now that they will patch it out, but it is what it is. Now, at this point, we're just going about finishing the skill trees. You can just get whatever it is that you want. It's like, it just is what it is. It's really no big deal. Um, at this point, it is completely up to you what you want to upgrade because all the all the necessary stuff, all the like the super easy peasy stuff is all been got. And that is Ashina Outskirts. Now, again, if you're unhappy with that method for killing the boss, it is what it is, and I'm sorry, but ultimately, if you fight the guy, I think you'll realise it is not worth it. I spent so many goes just trying to see if there was like an easy peasy legitimate method. There just isn't. He legitimately might be the hardest boss in all souls. Like, legitimately. Yeah, I can see that. He just just, just because of like how limited your healing and stuff is. and it's... I was stuck on Ishin for longer, but Ishin can be cheesed. Like... Unbelievably. He can be like cheese fought. Yeah. He, the the demon of hatred is either he can be skipped, or he can be grinded against. Yeah. <laughs> and man, is he a grind! I think he was my biggest emblem sink in the game. Yeah, yeah. Most because likely. it was using the shield, using the malcontent, and stuff like that. So that was, was expensive. That was my issue for this boss specifically. Was that the economy? He's just too expensive to fight. Yeah, no, 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 just that's legitimately to skip it. Him. <laughs> that's actually legitimately it. Because Demon of hatred stocks plummet. <laughs> <laughs> so just because with the amount of times if you die and you're using all your emblems and stuff, and then you need to go farm to just have goes at fuck that, fuck that. See if you just got like maxed out emblems like every single time, I'd be like, okay, you know what? Sure, I'll just keep keep at them. Yeah. But having to like. Stop playing the game to go farm over and over again. Can't be fucked. Don't need it in my life. Didn't like farming bullets and vials and bloodborne. Not gonna farm it in Sekiro. <laughs> exactly. Not even a gun that I can use either. Fuck you. <laughs> so, that's it for that part. Again, you can go look up other guides if you want, but you won't want to. You can't hate the way we beat the boss more than the boss hates in general. Yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. Now, uh, the next part is Harata Estate. And then it's on to the final boss. So hopefully you enjoyed this part. And hopefully we'll see you in the next ones. Catch you guys later.